those who wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength, and they shall. Welcome to Raymond Melbourne Online Church. Hi to everyone joining us from Melbourne, Australia and around the world. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this amazing online service we have today. We commit it to you. Lord, have your way. Thank you that you have a word in season for each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. So what's on? Well, we have a carol service coming up. That's at Mill Park on the 18th of December. So it starts off with a barbecue and fellowship at 3 p.m. and then carols at 5 p.m. There's going to be carols, of course, special songs, children's items and lots of Christmas joy. So come along and invite all your friends. We also have Cole Stringer next Sunday on the 11th of December. He's the author of many Christian books. He brings a powerful message along with an interesting and wonderful sense of humour. He'll be at both services, Doncaster 10 a.m. and Mill Park at 5 p.m. We have a men's breakfast on Saturday the 10th of December from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. Bookings are essential, so please text the church on 0410-961-123 or see Pastor Gary in person. This year we're giving away 80 Christmas hampers to people in need in our community. So you can be a great help by bringing food to church on Sundays or sowing a financial seed. Please mark your offering as Christmas hampers. Church prayer. We have church prayer on Monday the 5th of December at Mill Park at 7pm. Let's come together to pray for our church, for people to be saved and healed and for miracles and revival. All of our online programs can be watched on Rayma Family Church Melbourne, Facebook and YouTube. So please like and subscribe. Online this week, we have Eagles Prayer at 7.30pm and our Sunday service at 10am. If you live in Melbourne, you can join us in person at Doncaster 10am or Mill Park at 5pm or both. If you need help or prayer support, please contact the church. Our contact details should be below on your screen right now or you can go to our website, raymafamilychurch.org.au or you can message us on 0450 006 212. We appreciate your continued support for Raymond Ministry. Have an awesome day and a blessed week and enjoy this Christmas season. Bye. Good morning, everyone. We're just going to receive our tithes and offerings for this morning. I'm just going to have a look at a, a quick verse in the Bible. It's in Genesis chapter 4. It's uh, the early part of the story of Cain and Abel. It says, Now Adam knew his wife Eve. And she conceived and bore, bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain was a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering he had no regards. So Cain was very angry and his face fell. You know, even just in the very first few pages of the Bible, we can see, you know, a lesson here on giving this that I wanted to bring up and just share with everyone this morning, just as a fresh reminder. You know, Cain gave an offering to the Lord, but Abel gave the first. The firstborn, it says he, Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock. What came out first? You know, there's a, a, a well-known portion of Scripture in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. It says, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And it's a popular verse, but the context, of, the context of that verse is in giving and is in provision. And for us to not worry about where our clothes and where our food and where our drinks are going to come from, that the Lord already knows what we need. He already, he's already aware of it. The pagans and the Gentiles, they seek after all these things, but we are to seek first the kingdom of God and it's seeking Him first uh, in our giving and in, in provision. So I just want to encourage everyone this morning, you know, just as we give this morning, we just want to seek God first in our giving. We want to give to Him first. We want to, 
We want to live to give and not just give to live and get by. We want to, we want to be givers. So um, there's details on your screen to be able to give. We just thank you for your support for Rayma Family Church Melbourne, for tuning in online. Have a blessed morning and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Rayma Melbourne Online Church as we continue today on our series of unshakable faith. And so, you know, there's some great keys. I want to continue teaching on the law of faith, the law of faith. And, you know, it's so important, this teaching, to our foundations of faith, to learning and knowing how to live by faith and walk by faith and how to operate uh, and activate the law of faith, the laws that govern faith. So, you know, let's get ready. And uh, let's pray, let's commit it to the Lord as we uh, dig into the Word of God today. So Father, we just thank you for your Word. We thank you that your Word is life. Hallelujah. And that the Word we hear brings life to us. It brings revelation and understanding. And we pray that today, Father. For, I pray for wisdom, revelation that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened and open to the light and the truth of your word today as we commit ourselves, commit it to you, commit the study of the word uh, pertaining to faith and unshakable faith. So we thank you for it right now as we commit it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, this is the law of faith. So uh, God operates by law and principle. So I'm going to continue and we're going to dig a little bit deeper today with regarding the laws of faith. So God operates by law and principle. And we said last week that a principle is a truth. God's word, that is a truth. It is a principle. That's what a principle is a truth that serves as the foundation. That's our truth. That's the foundation, the foundation of faith, the foundation of the law of faith, the foundation that we stand on. We stand on his promises, that all the promises of God are yes and amen. His promise of healing, his promise of salvation, uh, deliverance from the kingdom of darkness and being translated into the, the kingdom of his dear son, the kingdom of light the kingdom of hope, the kingdom of increase, a kingdom of prosperity. Amen. So that is our foundation, the truth. And the principle is the truth that serves as a foundation for a system. And so under the law of faith, there is a system how things operate. We shared briefly last week about McDonald's and how McDonald's is a system. They're franchise. When you buy a McDonald's uh franchise you buy a system and it's the system they say that if you buy from us and you operate and work that system according to the McDonald's law then you will be successful and so it's exactly the same principle for us when we apply uh, the system of God's word and we put God's word into operation when we apply the laws pertaining to faith that I'm teaching about, then you will have breakthrough and you will have great success. You'll have many testimonies and many faith stories that you will be able to share with other people to encourage them. And so what is a law? A law is a system of rules that regulate the actions or uh, a system of rules that regulate our actions. And so the law of faith regulate our actions. What are the actions of the law of faith? We believe, we receive. So we believe and receive. We speak. And then there is always a corresponding action with our words. Our words correspond uh, with, uh, our words correspond with our actions and with also, they correspond with what we believe. And so uh, the law, the law of faith. Uh, 
You know, there is also the law of seed time and harvest. When you put that law into action, it will work every time. Just like the law of gravity. The law of gravity, if I hold an object in my hand and I let go of it, the force of gravity will pull that to the ground. If I let go, it won't stand there or stay in the air or float in the air. That, that object um, is a law and it will just drop and fall to the ground. That is the laws that govern grand, uh, gravity. And we said that the law of lift, so every time you look at an aeroplane, that supersedes the law of gravity and, and it supersedes that that law of gravity, but the law of gravity is still in operation. It's still there. It's not removed, but the law of lift supersedes that law of gravity. And so there are natural laws and there are spiritual laws. And so the spiritual laws of God, the spiritual laws of the kingdom of heaven, uh, they supersede and, and are above the natural laws. And one reason why that is, of course, is because the unseen created the seen. And the unseen God or God or the spiritual realm created this natural realm. Amen. Hallelujah. And so there are natural laws and there are spiritual laws. The law of seed, time and harvest. The law of seed, you sow the seed. Then there's a time, there's a time of growing. And then that seed will produce a harvest. And that's the law of seed, sowing seed. How do you uh, sow spiritual seeds? You cast, you sow spiritual seeds with words. And that's a part of the law of faith. You are sowing when you are saying. When you're saying, you're sowing, and you're sowing and casting seed into the ground. And um, and so, just like the law, uh, Romans eight two, of the laws, uh, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So that's uh, Romans eight two. So when you believed in your heart and you can. Confess Jesus as your Lord and as your Saviour. You put the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ because Christ is life. Hallelujah. And God came to give us life and life more abundantly. And when you put the law of the spirit of life of Christ Jesus, that law of salvation, of believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth, then you are saved. You were delivered from the law of the spirit of death, the law of death, uh, the free from the law of sin that produce in death. Sin always results in death. That is a law. And so that's why even when we're saved, it, we should be walking in the spirit and, and living within the law of or, or within the Word of God, because there's protection in the Word of God. We walk through the valley of a shadow of death. We walk through that as we walk in the Word. We don't step outside of the Word of God. Remember, the blessings and the curses are still on the earth. The curse is on the earth through the fall of Adam, and the curse will not be removed until the millennium. But for us that are in Christ, we're under the law because of his grace, because of his love, because of his mercy. We are under the law of the spirit of life. And as we live in the word and apply the word, hallelujah, we, we fly above. <laughs> we live above the curse. Hallelujah. We live above the law and we've been delivered from that law of sin that always produces death. Hallelujah. And so um, we said in Romans 3, 27, uh, where is boasting then? It is excluded. Where is boasting? It's excluded. By what law? The law of works? 
No, but by the law of faith. So for faith to work and receive results, let me say that again. We're talking about achieving results. We're expecting about breakthroughs. We're talking about breakthroughs in our health, healing in our bodies, breakthroughs in our finances, breakthroughs in our marriage, breakthroughs, spirit, soul in our mind, suffering from depression and oppression and like we're living in a, a world of darkness. You can be free from all that. I'm teaching you keys of how to be free. Glory be to God. As we live by faith and walk by faith, as we apply and live in, apply these laws of faith for faith to work and receive results, its laws must be activated. Its laws must be ad adhered to. We must adhere to those laws and they must be activated. They are activated as we believe, as we speak, and as we have a corresponding physical action with what we speak and what we believe. So for faith to work and receive results, its laws must be adhered to. You cannot violate its laws. You cannot violate the law of, 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 of um, life, the law of the, the, the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus, because if you, if you don't activate, if you don't adhere to that law that there's salvation through Christ, then the end result, the penalty of the law of sin is death. The penalty of sin will be eternal separation and eternal death separated from God. And so its laws must be adhered, adhered to. You cannot violate the, the laws. You cannot violate the law of faith. If you violate the law of faith, there'll be wrong result, there'll be no result, and there will be failure. And that's why, glory be to God, I'm teaching you about the law of faith so that we can have tremendous breakthroughs and testimonies in our lives. Amen? And so, you know, that's why... Um, as you get breakthroughs, let us know what's happening uh, in your life. Let us know that you've had some fantastic and tremendous faith breakthroughs. And uh, testify of that. Let us know. Let people know about what God is doing in your life. So we're talking about results, not violating its laws. You cannot violate the law of gravity or it will be harmful for you. You cannot violate the law of gravity. If you're on a skyscraper and you jump off, you've just violated the law of gravity. And, uh, and, and it will kill you, that law. Uh, why? Because you violated its law. It's the same with the laws of electricity. Electricity. Uh, that same law of electricity that can cook you delicious food and keep you lovely and warm in winter. If you violate the laws of electricity, it can kill you. Okay? And so we're talking about achieving results. You can't violate the law of faith and expect, and expect to get results. You will end up with a shipwreck faith. You'll end up with a shipwreck faith. Then the Bible talks about a shipwreck faith. A shipwreck faith is 1 Timothy 1.19. In the new, uh, in the NIV, and it reads this way. It reads, holding on to faith. Remember, we hold fast to the word. We hold fast to the promise of God. Faith and, faith and patience inherit the promises of God. We're holding on to faith. We're holding on to a good conscience, which some have rejected. Don't reject the law of faith because you will not achieve the results and so have suffered shipwreck. So holding on to faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected. And so they have suffered shipwreck with regard to their faith. So we, 
You know, I'm teaching this. I don't want you to have a shipwreck faith. I want you to have tremendous breakthroughs. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So for faith to work, uh, for faith to work and re- receive results, its laws must be uh, adhered to and its laws must be activated. You have to activate, release those laws. Do, act. You have to do something. Faith comes by hearing. You can have faith because you heard the gospel about Christ But that doesn't save you alone. You can pray and you can just pray, but prayer alone without a word, without a promise, without an action will not produce results. And so so it's about activating and adhering to those laws of faith. That's why you cannot be saying, well, I don't believe in all that confession stuff. If you don't believe in the confession, you don't even believe in your own salvation because Romans 10, 9 and 10 tells us that <laughs> you, 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 you believed unto righteousness and confession was made unto salvation. You confessed Christ as your Lord and as your Saviour. You believed and you received him. Glory be to God. We must activate faith. Faith is a spiritual force that is within our born again spirit. I shared that last week with you. And um, faith always has a corresponding action. 2 Corinthians 4, 13 to 14, we have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, Therefore, I have spoken. We believe also and therefore we speak. So faith, the law of faith always speaks. The law of faith always speaks. We said that uh, in, in Mark 11, verse 23. So first of all, the law of faith, the law of faith hears. How does faith come in? By hearing and hearing. The word of God, the word, the promise of God, the promise of salvation. How does faith come by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God? And, uh, and in, in Romans, it talks about how will they hear without a preacher? How can they believe without a preacher? How can you hear without a preacher? That's why church is important. That's why it's important, you know, that we sit under the ministry gifts. I am a ministry gift. I'm a gift to you. I'm a gift to the church as a pastor to equip and train people uh, how to live by faith and walk by faith. That's our mission. Our mission at Rhema is to help people uh, live a lifestyle of faith that is pleasing to God. So our lifestyle is important. And our lifestyle is a lifestyle of faith because without faith, it's not possible to please God. Hallelujah. And so faith always believes. Faith comes by hearing. And so you're hearing the word of God today. We believe that. Where do we believe it? In our spirit, in our inner man, the hidden man of the heart. We believe in our heart. And uh, our heart is a spirit man. We looked at that last week. How do you know if you are believing? Good question, isn't it? How do I know if I'm really believing? Am I believing God? Am I believing for, for healing? Because the enemy might be telling you, You don't really believe this isn't really going to work for you. But how do you know that if you are in that zone? How do you know if that you are believing? Well, because uh, the realm of believing and receiving is the same realm as confidence. We looked at that last week in 1 John 5, 14 and 15. This is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything, According to his word, his word is his will. If we ask according to his word, which is his will, which is the promise, the word, 
When you ask, when you pray, when you ask, he hears. If you know, do you know that God hears? If you do and you have confidence, then you are in that realm of believing. You know that you believe if you know. This is the confidence that have, we have in him that, that if we know that he hears us, then we know that he does that what we pray. He, he acts upon. He is the apostle and high priest of our prayer, of our confession. Hallelujah. He hears us and he moves on that. Amen. And if we know that we that he hears whatever we ask, we know that we have. We know that we have. We have those petitions. We have those. We know that we have the answer. And so it's not the answer. It's not what I know. It's what you know. And so the easiest way to know whether you're in that realm of believing is, do you know? Do you know the truth? It's the same realm as believing. When you believe, you know. I know that 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 I'm saved. I know that 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 I'm going to heaven. You cannot persuade me out of that. I know that. I can stand on that promise. I can stand on that word. I know that there's eternal life. In Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I know that all the promises of God are yes and amen for me. And so, and that same realm of of confidence is exactly the same. How do you know if you're believing? Well, you know the truth. It's not the truth. I know you must be persuaded. You must know. Not only that, that realm of confidence is the same realm of knowing and the same realm as believing and receiving. Hebrews 10.25, we've read this several times as well, where it reads, um, uh, cast not away your confidence that has great payment of reward. There's rewards when you hold fast to your confidence. Hold fast to your confidence and assurance in the promise. Be persuaded. Remember, Abraham was fully persuaded what God said in his word, that he was more than able to do that. And if you know whatever you ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. And Jeremiah tells us that God watches over his word to perform it in our life. So faith believes, faith is in the heart. The heart is not the natural physical organ, but it is our spirit man. It's in our heart, it's in our spirit. That inner man, that's where we believe. I shared with you last week that uh, a good way of really understanding that man within there, he's the real man. He's the spirit man, the unseen man. Just as there's an unseen God, there's an unseen man. That's your heart. That's your spirit. If I had a zipper and I zipped out, zipped it down and stepped out, that would be my spirit man. To be absent from the body when we zip that down is to be present and we step out of the body is to be present with the Lord. Glory be to God. Uh, okay, and uh, so we speak, we believe, but we speak. We're just focusing on words. We're focusing on confession just a little bit more and just going a little bit deeper now. And then in, um, in uh, Proverbs 18, 20 to 21, tells us that life and death are in the power of the tongue and we eat the fruit of our words. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Psalm 119.89, we read this last week. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. So again, God's word is settled in heaven. But, or settled, uh, and that word settled means firmly fixed. God's word is firmly fixed in heaven. It's established up there. But how do we establish God's word on the earth? It's established there. We need to establish it on the earth. We need to activate it. We need to release and and get the results from 
the life that's in the seed, the life that's in that word. Hallelujah. Amen. So God's word established. We establish it on the earth as we believe it, as we speak it, confess it, speak it, and as we act upon what God's word said. Right in the beginning of time, remember, and God said, he acted. Words are still a part of action, but there can be actions with words and there can be actions with a physical action. Sometimes you cannot physically act on something immediately, so you need to start acting by believing digging into the word, finding a truth, finding a promise for for your situation, finding that, that promise, that word, and then speaking that, meditating on that, getting persuaded in your heart that that word uh, is your breakthrough. There's a breakthrough there in that, through that word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you stand on that truth, as you stand and apply the law that will govern success. Amen. Hallelujah. So we estab- God's word is established and we establish it on the earth. Isaiah 55, we read it last week, but I want to touch on it again this week because um, uh, I just want us to go a touch deeper on that as well. Isaiah 55, verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. We don't think like God. And your ways are not my ways, says God. Our ways, our actions. We don't think or act like God naturally. But we're not natural mere human beings. We are supernatural beings with a supernatural word that come from a supernatural realm and a supernatural God. His ways, his thoughts are higher. And so our thoughts and our ways can become higher when we apply the truth and the life that is in the word of God. (laughs) Oh, glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. Now, as the heavens are higher, God is higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. The spirit, spiritual laws, there's spiritual laws and natural laws. The spiritual laws created the natural laws. Spiritual laws are above the natural laws. The spiritual word of God is above any other word in existence. And so are my ways higher than your ways. So God's actions, how God behaves, his behavior patterns. And that's what a law is. You, you, you adhere to the laws of through your behavior patterns, your actions. And so faith has actions that apply the law of faith that will produce results. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and the rain, but and the rain comes down, but it does not return without water in the earth and makes it bring forth and bud, that it will give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So is my word. So there's a type now. He's comparing the word to rain and snow. And so does my word that goes forth out of my mouth, out of my mouth. That's how God got sowed the word into the earth through words. Words of revelation that came to prophets and people of old, in the Old Testament I'm referring to, that wrote, that heard those words and wrote them down. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth, that it will not return 
return, hold on to that, void, but it will accomplish that which I please and it will prosper in the thing where I sent it. And so let's think about it now. So God's ways, God's thoughts are higher than ours. And just as the rain is higher in the snow, and what happens to the rain and the snow? They come from heaven, the heavens. They come from the clouds. They come from the heaven. And it comes down. And what does it do? It waters the seed. And it, it gives seed and produces seed. It waters the seed. It gives bread for food, bread for us to eat. And it gives us seed to the sow. And that's what God's word does. It comes down from heaven. It was spoken down from heaven. And for it to produce, uh, because he gave a seed, seed to sow. So some, like our tithes and offerings, some, our tithes and offering is what we sow. And a farmer, when he sows a seed, he always sows the seed, his best seed, so that he can have a bumper crop the next harvest the next time he's not going to eat his seed you don't eat your tithe and offering you cast that into the ground uh, ready to produce more harvest amen a farmer would be silly to eat all his seed no he casts seed back into the ground his best seed and the other rest of the seed uh, is is taken out the harvest for people to eat is for provision. And so, and so he sends that seed down. And uh, what, it, what it will do, it'll give seed to the sower. So the rain comes down to provide seed and, and food. And then it returns back up. But it doesn't return until it produces a harvest and fruit. Then it returns up. And that's how the law and the system works when it comes to rain and water. Uh, water uh, on the earth, it evaporates and it's lifted up. A lot of it's pulled up from the sea, but water on the earth, it's, it evaporates and it lifts up into, evaporates into the clouds and the clouds then move and it's moved across uh, land, the land, and then those clouds get heavy and then it releases that rain back down to produce again and then it evaporates and it goes back up. This is the system of the law of faith. That's what he's saying. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It will not return to me void, but it will accomplish that which I please and it will prosper where I send it. And so God's word is spoken word has come down. How do we establish it's established in heaven? How do we establish it on the earth? By speaking it back down, speaking it, and it goes back up to God. So the word has come down, we believe it, we receive it, we speak it, confess it, act it, and as we speak it back, Jesus is the He's the sent one, the apostle and high priest of our confession. He hears our confession. And he's the advocate, the lawyer in heaven who's saying to the Father, Father, they are declaring your word, believing and speaking the laws of heaven, your laws, the, the laws of God, the laws of faith. And therefore they are acting that. They're acting upon your word. And so you speak it out. So it comes down. The words come down. We believe, we receive, and we send it back up. Jesus is the apostle and high priest over our confession and uh, to make sure that that word comes to pass. Just like that promise for Abraham came to pass when he believed and received the promise of God for a son and then gave birth. We give birth to that promise. We produce fruit, a breakthrough in your body for healing. I believe there's someone listening today that, that needs this message. You need that healing in your body. I'm giving you some tremendous keys that can help you on your journey. Uh, 
of recovery. Hallelujah. And I believe that's a word from God. He's speaking to you and reaching out to you and telling you, asking you to believe and apply these laws uh, that govern victory for you and success and to help you recover from your situation. Glory be to God. Amen. And so there's a miracle that words are seeds. You sow them. And so it comes down and it goes back up, comes down just like the rain comes down, produces seed and harvest and goes back up. And that cycle, same thing, word comes down, we send it up. It's the cycle of life. Glory be to God. Words are seeds. There's a miracle in your mouth, death and life. Don't be producing nothing. Don't be producing idle words. Idle words produce nothing. Don't speak words of death because words of death are bound in fear. We must be speaking words of life. Glory be to God. Amen. So before we finish this morning, there's just something else that I I really want to share with you on this because it's so important because uh, we're talking about speaking the word of God. We're talking about acting on the Word of God. And so the Word of God, you're only going to get results when we apply the law of faith as we believe, speak and act. And uh, because what you believe is what you speak. What you believe is what you say. It's not just changing your confession, it's changing your believing. It's changing your belief system. But you can't change your belief System, You can't change what you believe unless you change your thinking. Because what you think is what you believe. What you believe is what you speak. And what you speak is what you believe. And what you speak is because of what you think, wrong thinking, wrong thinking, wrong believing, wrong speaking. So to change your words, you must Renew your mind with the word of God. And we have to put the word of God in our heart. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm going to show you a couple of important keys that are really going to help you next week regarding that. Uh, So what we believe is a result of our thinking. If you can't speak right, you cannot speak right until you think right. So you're going to have to renew your mind with the word of God. You can't say right until you think right. We cannot believe beyond truth. You cannot believe beyond truth. How does truth come? By hearing. And then when you hear that, you have to believe that. But you won't believe it. Unless if your thoughts say, oh, that's rubbish. I don't believe in tithing. I don't believe in divine healing. I believe when your time's up, your time's up. No, you can believe God and you activate the word of God. You, we cannot believe be beyond truth and knowledge that we have. Hallelujah. And let me say this, I'm going to close on, the, on, on the, a couple of little quotes that I'm saying. How do we define confession? We define confession, it is affirming something we believe. We are affirming something we believe. We believe the law of faith and we put that into action by believing, speaking and physical action. So... To define confession, it's affirming something we believe. Secondly, it's testifying about something we know. In other words, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the words, the word of our testimony. Our testimony, the word of our testimony, we overcome by the word of his promise. The word, what are we testifying? We're testifying that by his stripes I'm healed. We are testifying that when I bring my tithes and offerings, that it opens up the windows of heaven and pours out blessing. So define confession. 
We're affirming something we believe. We're testifying about something we know. And thirdly, it's a truth that we have embraced. And we know that the truth that you know, <laughs> glory be to God, will make you free. We'll appreciate you joining us this morning. You're going to have an awesome overcoming week. If you've never received Christ as your Lord and Saviour, uh, this is life-changing. So you're going to make a, a life-changing prayer now. I want you to pray with me, and this will change your destiny, destiny and, and you will come from life, from death to life. You come from death to life when you receive Christ. This is how you do it. This is how you act. You say, Jesus, say these words with me. Now, you want to receive Christ. Say, Jesus, I confess you as my Lord. I believe in my heart that you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe that you went to the cross, that you died, you were buried, and that you rose again on the third day for me. I believe that and I receive you as my Lord and Saviour. So if you've done that, then please contact us because we've got information that we need to send to you. If you live in Melbourne, please come and visit us at Doncaster, Rayma Doncaster at 10 a.m., then Rayma uh, Mill Park at 5 p.m. And you can always watch this. Uh, this goes to air 10 o'clock every Sunday, but you can watch that at any time as well. Uh, Raymond Melbourne Online Church, you can watch these these programs at any time. And, um, you know, also we have awesome prayer meetings, our Eagles Prayer. That is absolutely awesome and dynamic. And uh, also we have a, a healing meeting uh, on the first Wednesday. So we've got... The first uh, Wednesday of every month is our healing meeting. So, oh, wow. God bless you. You have an awesome week. And remember that Jesus is Lord. And those who wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength. Show.